Hello, and welcome to my video. Hi there, and thanks for checking out my channel. Today I want to introduce you to my product called Ultimate Homebrew for the Game Boy Advance. It's a fantastic development environment for building Game Boy Advance games. So, what makes this different than other solutions you might have seen? Well, this one comes with a DevKit Pro toolchain and SDK, a web-based IDE with plug-in support, C and C++ code completion, and the ability to create a new product from a template. There's other features that are coming along, but they're not quite ready for prime time. We're going to have a Game Boy Advance emulator as a Visual Studio Code plugin, and we're going to have support for many more platforms as long as they have a um, C compiler. So, with all of that out of the way, let's get started. So, first thing, and the only thing you really need, is Docker. So, what is Docker? Well, Docker is a sweet little tool that lets you download images, build containers, and a container is like a little short-lived operating system running on top of your main operating system for doing a specific task such as serving a web page, uh, compiling a program, it lets you have a consistent development environment between developer machines. It's good for all that kind of stuff, but today we're going to use it for fun stuff. We're going to be making Game Boy Advance games. So, if you don't have Docker installed, please, please, please get Docker Desktop. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that from the practice run. Okay, so we are here. Search images to run. You're going to want this Long Joel Home forward slash ultimate homebrew GBA. And what that is, is that's the identifier for our image that I've spent quite a long time building. So here we go. Let's go pull. That'll pull it down. It's about two and a half gigs, not too large. So now that we have our image cloned down, we need to start a container. So let's go ahead and press start or run. So we need a name for our container. Well, uh, usually you'll want to name it after your project. We're going to call this one Tiny Tempest. For no other reason, I don't know what kind of a game it is. It might not even be a game. I just want to show you how the tool works. So we're going to let Docker pick the port for us. And the last thing we need to do is we need to pick the path. So here we go on my computer. We will go into projects and we will create a new folder and we will call it tiny tempest select that folder so this is what it is on the outside and this is what it is on the inside so on the inside that has to point at otherwise it's going to be really hard to get all the tooling working if you're going to mount it in a different location but okay now we're ready to run so this might take a little bit longer on yours, depending on if you've run it before. I'm not sure what exactly is getting cached, but here we go. So we have our logs. We have our inspect. We have our bind mounts. So if we wanted to, we could click here. And here it is. We have our execute. So while this thing's running, we have full access to the uh, Linux shell. We can look at our files. And these are our container stats. Okay. Uh, that might take a while to load, so while... So we don't really care about it anyways, so let's go ahead and open this guy up. Wow, isn't that something? Visual Studio Code inside the browser. Now I'm going to go ahead and blow this up so you can see things just a little bit better. It's one of the kind of cool things about web applications is you can 
they're in the browser so you can just zoom them on in so right now we're looking at the explorer and we've got a few things here already populated this source folder maps back to this tiny tempest so right now as you can see there's nothing in here let's go ahead and put something in there this is usually where you'd start looking around the internet for sample code or checking around in the SDK trying to figure out, oh gosh, did it come with a, a, a template? Well, there's no guessing here. You go down to Task Manager, which is an extension that comes built in with this Docker image. You go to our Task Manager and then you click Generate Template. And that's going to copy the files out of the template and put them right here. So if we go back, source, well there's a source subdirectory. We have a make file and we have a template project. I'm not totally sure what that's for, but it doesn't matter. So let's go look at the source code. Oh, what's this? This is something that's going to be automated in the next version. But for right now, let's go ahead and click install. All right. The clean daemon is now ready to go. And now as you can see, you can click on this. Oh, it tells you exactly where it goes. Let's follow the link. Oh, sweet. Here we go. Oh, what is this? What's this here? We have function stuff. Say so we wanted to do a for each loop. Actually, it's I print F here. So just uh, just to show, you know, we have our full code complete. And even if you didn't want to do that, um, you could, I think, just connect this directly to Visual Studio Code on your host. It's just in a Docker container, so it shouldn't be too hard. But that's beyond the scope of what we're covering here. Um, now that we have some code, let's go ahead and build. So we can just click this make task. And all this does is it just runs some command line stuff. Make sure we're in the right directory. Hit make. Oh, and what's all that? Now, as you can see here, we have a dot, we have a source file and we have a GBA file. It compiled. It built. Our output is right there. Now we can right click on here, we can go download. And then we can open the our favorite emulator, MGBA. Now, future versions of this Docker container, I am hoping to find a way to build an extension so that we can run something in WebAssembly and have it sitting right here but I don't know WebAssembly yet, so we've got a ways to go. But I'm hoping if you're watching this video, it's interesting to you, maybe you can help me out with it. I'll have a link to my GitHub down below. And that's really all I have. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope it was worth your time. I hope you learned something, and I hope it inspires you to make something. If it does, please reach out. Let me know what you're making. Thanks.